Ghazali, so of course now the big focus is on humanitarian aid entering into Gaza with finally uh, the opening of that uh, that corridor, that aid corridor, and that required a lot of diplomatic negotiations as well. So talk to us about that and also the larger geopolitical ramifications. What does Biden's visit actually mean you know, in the larger diplomatic sense? You know, does it mean also that you know the relationship between the West and the Middle East uh, has somehow taken a hit because we're seeing uh, many. Uh, anti-American protests in Lebanon as well. Okay, so as far as the humanitarian aid is concerned, certainly Biden's visit has made a breakthrough there because we had seen how some in Israel that first Egypt has agreed to open the Rafah border crossing for allowing the, uh, the, 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 the Gaza residents or the American citizens who are there in Gaza yet it didn't work out in the last 24 to 48 hours. And now after Biden's visit, Israel finally issued a statement confirming that they will allow the humanitarian aid to get into uh, Gaza from the Egyptian side, but not from the Israeli side. Netanyahu was very clear to say that they will not send any aid from Israel's side into Gaza, saying that you can't help those people who have a... or Hamas who have attacked us and yet... We will provide them any sort of help. So this certainly Biden's visit has helped to make that break. And as far as the Jewish relation is concerned, it's a big, big win for Israel as of now. And uh, because it's a grand standing of Israel at a global stage. Earlier, German Chancellor was there. Now U.S. President is here. And in the next coming days, we are also hearing that heads of other states will also come and meet at any solidarity. Also, if you see that the ground invasion in Gaza, which has been talked about in the last couple of days that Israel will get into Gaza, that certainly has been delayed for now. And what we are picking up is that Biden has also warned Netanyahu to have some concern for Lebanon because Hezbollah is much more stronger than Hamas as a terror organization. And Israel has been warned by U.S. that you are not prepared for, for a two-front war because Lebanon is on the north side. And Gaza, or the Hamas, which is based in Gaza, is on the southern side of Israel. So Biden has certainly told Netanyahu to reconsider his decision of getting into the ground invasion into Gaza thing. And that's why we are seeing this delay. But this certainly this entire Israel-Hamas war has taken a hit on the has taken a hit on the relations between West and the Arab world. And we are seeing that a lot of protest is happening across many Middle Eastern states. And, and perhaps for the first time, we are seeing the heads of all the, most of the Arab states are now condemned, condemning Israel because just a couple of months ago, there was all the talks of normalization between Israel and other Arab states. But all those countries, even those who are having good relations with Israel, have also come out to condemn them. So it's also a big challenge for Joe Biden, who will be uh, sort of contesting elections for a re-election next year. His Middle Eastern policy certainly has taken a hit in, in terms of global politics. Red Ghazali, thanks so much uh, for joining us with all those details.